Well, hi, Kay. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this interview. It's very nice to have you here. Right now, you stand 22nd in the minus 55 world ranking. Over the last two years, some of your major uh, results were uh, a fifth place at, in Okinawa in yep. 2017, a third place in Paris in 2017, yep. and this year's third place at the Pan Am Championships. And you also won second at the Pan Am Games. Karate. Um, my parents put me into the sport as well as my brother um, for the disciplinary aspect to it, but also just because it sounded cool and it was close to our house, and I'm sure that because it was financially kind of in the right area. Um, so we started that, um, like I said, I was five years old and he was seven, and we just kind of worked our way up through the years and actually got our black belts together. I do Cheetah as a style, um, however I mostly focus on Kumite right now, which of course doesn't really have a style, <laughs> so to speak, but that's, those are where my basics lie. My favorite technique would be the jab, that's probably what I'm best known for, um, but also just any hand techniques, I like to focus on those. Anything that works on offensive, defensive, um, anything that requires a certain amount of reaction time and also any kind of speed. My training schedule is fairly hectic, um, so I train about five days a week, um, minimum. Uh, that includes three times a week at the strength and conditioning center that I work out at, and also up to three times a week at the dojo. And that of course doesn't include if I have anything going on the weekends. I do like to take at least one day off, but it is a lot of work and it amounts to basically a part-time job. So the week before competition is a lot about mental preparation, um, but also for me um, is a lot focused on my weight cut. <laughs> um, so, um, so there's a lot of cardio in there and there's a lot of time on treadmills, uh, but it's mostly just mental preparation and try to focus myself most um, in for whatever kind of performance I'm looking for. So typically I'm about four kilos above my weight category, so it is a lot of work to get into the category that I'm in. Um, but I personally have flip-flopped between a couple of categories and I like the game that's played in the minus 55. So. <laughs> Before or after weigh-in? <laughs> after weigh-in? Oh man, oh man. Of course I follow a dietitian's plan, but uh, after weigh-in I feel like the biggest thing is salt, so anything salty. So my absolute favorite food is anything to do with fries, but I try to stay away from those, especially leading into the weigh-in, which is probably why I have to struggle so bad to get into the weigh-in. Um, but basically anything like that I'm going to go for 100%. Um, so, uh, seconds before I compete is a lot about just kind of relaxing myself, so uh, there's no real words that I say in particular, I just kind of focus on all of the stuff that I've been focusing on in trainings leading up to it, as well as any inspirational, so to speak, uh, things that any of my coaches have told me leading into my actual entry into the ring. Depends on the match. Um, a lot of my mistakes are often tactical. Um, me as a fighter, I know that I'm very technically strong because I love technical training. Um, but oftentimes it's just about throwing the right thing at the right time and sometimes that just doesn't happen. Um, and sometimes it's just about shooting something too far at a distance. So it really just depends on the day. Um, and of course some days it's just that it wasn't my day and I fought a fighter that was just genuinely better than me. So it definitely depends on the fighter that I'm facing. <laughs> including my original instructor and sensei, who is also the head of my uh, dojo, Don Maserol. Um, but uh, my instructor back home, my coach back home, and one of my biggest supporters, my biggest fans, is Randy Ricks, um, whom I still continue to train with. We've actually been training together for over 10 years, so he knows pretty much just about everything there is to know about Kate. Um, but also uh, on the national team, Nassim Maraste, who's also one of my number one fans, somebody that I really admire. Um, she's actually a two-time silver world medalist herself, so huge, huge inspiration in terms of athletic cap capabilities. And then also Roman Sosko, who is also here in Ontario, and he has also followed me, and he actually sat in my corner at the games, and is also a huge supporter of me as well. My role model is actually, one of them is here this weekend, 
fun training with me, which is great. I'm um, Douglas Rose. Um, he's a tremendous athlete, an incredible person, and a big inspiration for everybody I think that he meets. Um, and also, I really look up to how humble he is about all of his accomplishments. Um, so he's my primary one, and also there's a couple of others over the course of the years that I've run into. Um, another big name, I guess, would be Agayev, especially with how he's kind of revolutionized our sport. Um, but there's a lot of others in between that have really, truly inspired me. My biggest accomplishment so far would definitely be my silver medal at the Pan Am Games. Um, that was just like the most amazing experience in the entire world, especially where I was like, even the night before, I was like calling my boyfriend crying, be like, I don't deserve to be here, it's crazy. Um, so, but uh, definitely that. But I'm looking for my next big accomplishment, which I do sincerely hope is going to be um, to actually go to the Olympics, especially whereas this year we're included into it. Um, into the 2020 games rather and um, if not that then definitely becoming a world medalist hopefully in the next month or so. I think being an Olympian would just kind of be the cherry on top of any kind of career so. Uh, so um, any sport's expensive I think at the end of the day and uh, but I think if it's worth anything to you you're gonna make it work so that includes looking out for sponsorships, looking out for any kind of um, reimbursements or looking for uh, any kind of like sponsor or support that you can get. I myself personally, um, my PSO actually released a GoFundMe page this year which was wonderful. Um, really helped me out especially at the beginning of the year. Um, I'm also supported by Tokyo 2020 program which is also equivalently great. Um, but a lot of it does come down to me. And I do work. <laughs> when I'm not training, I do work. Um, so I work as a full-time administrative assistant for now until hopefully med school someday. Um, so it's just a kind of combination of sources that I rely on to get me into the places that I need to go. Um, I actually have no regrets. Um, I live my life on the basis that if I love something, I'm going to pursue it and following my heart. And I have done that nonstop, and that's why I'm, I am where I am in karate. Um, because it's because of that philosophy that I have remained in karate for as long as I have. Which is also probably the reason I ended up on a Karate Canada poster somewhere over there. So, um, yeah, I actually have no regrets because I've learned from everything and every mistake I've made. I think as cheesy as it sounds to some extent like everything happens for a reason so like I like any decision that I've ever made and my parents even putting me in karate in the first place I really feel was meant for something um, I'm also a very stubborn person so to put me into any sport maybe I would have excelled as much but just karate has really spoken to me and I have tried other sports and they didn't really sit as great with me as karate has so I don't know I think I'm, I still follow on my same stance that I don't regret anything. So you wouldn't change anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> the retirement question, the big R. So if you had have asked me 10 years ago, I would have said I would have probably been retired by now and likely in med school. But I've always kind of operated on that same idea that I'm going to know when I'm done. I think once, uh, I think when a, a sport that you love becomes a job and becomes something that you hate or something that you resent in any way, I think at that point you know you're done. And I'm not there yet. I've definitely always loved what I do, which has kept me interested as long as I have. So retirement is kind of a tough question, especially whereas now our sport's in the Olympics and that's like the next level and that's of course something that everybody wants to strive for. So I think I'm just going to know when I'm done, but it's definitely not yet. So I hopefully will enter med school in the next little while, <laughs> when, who knows, but um, enter med school and then pursue an actual career in pediatrics. I worked on the pediatric floor back in my hometown and I really learned a lot from the kids that I worked with and I really feel that I can give something to them. Um, so I'm hoping that that will be kind of where my career path leads me, um, but for now I'm just focusing on my athletic abilities, I suppose. <laughs> school about five years ago. Um, I decided to do two degrees at once. I don't recommend that. but <laughs> um, So I have a biology degree, a microbiology degree, and I also have a sociology degree. Um, so I graduated, uh, like I said, five years ago, and I'm just kind of focusing on karate right now and also working to get myself through it. Um, but 
like I said, I do want to go back to school and get it into uh, medicine, so it's coming shortly. <laughs> I have a little bit less of a hands-on kind of approach, especially whereas I'm working mostly as a receptionist most days. Um, but uh, I do still get to interact with the kids from time to time, and it's really rewarding in itself. So. Yes, I do. I have a boyfriend for about four years, um, Jeff Singer, and he is my number one supporter. He works through all the stresses of training and my hectic work schedules and my hectic competition schedules. And keeps the house afloat when I'm not there, so definitely, definitely an important part of my life. So you guys live together, right? Yeah. Is a uh, wedding, marriage, something that <laughs> you guys talk about? <laughs> Someday, but uh, unfortunately you need a lot of money to get married, unfortunately, and that is just not something that's in the books with my kind of work schedule right now, so um, hopefully in the next little while, but uh, for the time being, we're just happily living Before in Before or after retirement? Um, well, I guess you should ask him that. <laughs> question. Um, I'm not in a place where I could ever see myself having them, but I am also in a place where I love children and I love working with them. But um, It's also tough to kind of envision myself as a mom, especially whereas I take punches and kicks to the stomach on a day to day. So uh, definitely maybe someday. I'm not going to write it off, but uh, it's just not the right time. I have one brother, um, also a huge supporter for me and also one of my best friends, um, Alex Campbell. Actually in Ottawa right now, he works for Skillsoft. Um, but uh, yeah, he and I actually lived together for a few years back when we were roommates. And anyways, just a great guy, and uh, definitely has been a huge part of my life as well. Huh. Karate work and family life, my everlasting juggle. It's not easy, and I really think that um, the mental um, and emotional taxation of any sport is really what makes or breaks an athlete and uh, it's not easy. I am constantly having to balance and I have an amazing support system back home and my family is very understanding because they've been there from the beginning with me and to also furthermore be able to find a boyfriend who can also accept that and appreciate it as much as they do is it's really something special. So I don't have the answers to that. I feel like it's a juggling act every single day but if it's worth it you'll make it work. watching a lot of sports that we see on the Olympics from day to day. Um, gymnastics being one just off, off the top of my head, but there's a lot of them that I really truly appreciate. My favorite hobby is actually laying on my couch and watching Netflix. And as lame as that sounds, the ability to do nothing and just mindlessly watch television is something that I don't really get a lot of and not something I get to do um, frequently, um, but it's something that I just and napping. Oh man, napping's nice. Um, but I don't really have a hobby outside of just training and uh, karate. Um, and especially when my work schedule gets really crazy and even when I was in school, a lot of people would ask me, like, what do you do for fun? But for me, my fun is my training, so it's something I get out of it. So, yeah, Netflix and uh, just laying on my couch is really where it's at for me. I think a lot of times I wish I, I'm at an age where a lot of my friends are getting married and buying houses and even when I was younger and they were buying their first cars, I've always been a couple years behind a lot of my girlfriends and I think that is tough because I think uh, I think at some point eventually you want to be at that point where you're buying a house and you're moving on with your life and there's always going to be a little lag when uh, you're focused on something else but um, for me like there's not many of my friends that can sit there and say that they might be an Olympian or someday. So, uh, I feel like that's something I just have to keep remembering. Um, but like I said, karate I get so much out of that it's hard for me to picture it not in my life, so it's very easy to just accept where I am. I actually don't specifically follow any religion. Um, my parents never raised me to be a very religious person, so um, I can definitely appreciate 
appreciate um, what it gives people. Um, just because for me, I get a lot out of science, and I feel like um, everybody needs to believe in something. So um, I can definitely appreciate that part, and I actually love learning about it because um, all of these religions have a very fascinating take on how they see the world, and I find that all very fascinating. But I myself do not actually follow. Them. <laughs> uh, before weigh-in or after? <laughs> um, so I actually uh, have a dietitian that I follow very closely and everything that I put into my body is very monitored. Um, so that includes anything from what I eat, what I drink, I don't take any supplements and I don't put myself in positions where there's other things that could affect my performance in any way. Um, so yeah, my diet is extremely regulated and I think that's mostly just to keep my body weight down for the weight category that I can participate in. So what about uh, alcohol? Um, I think it's important to have a balance. So like, of course you're going to have a social life, and of course you're going to go to weddings or events, birthday parties, and these kinds of things, but it's all about moderation, and at the end of the day it's where your focus is. And my goals are bigger than just a drink or two, so that's where I keep my, uh, my head at. So, well, naps are my hobby. I don't get to do hobbies very often. <laughs> so I genuinely, generally don't sleep a lot. I sleep about six hours a day, which really is not enough for an athlete, but that's kind of where uh, my weekends come in for my recovery, and it's also because I try to jam a lot in, of course, balancing boyfriends and friends and work and all this stuff in the week, and of course on top of my training schedule. So I recover during the weekends. That's where my, uh, that's where my sleep happens, but uh, generally it's about six hours a day. Uh, my sarcasm. <laughs> I'm not the easiest person to give myself compliments, so I'm just going to say that I'm extremely dedicated, which is just a nicer way of saying I'm stubborn. Um, so if I put my mind to it, it's going to get done. My weakness is definitely I'm a perfectionist to the extreme. Um, so everything that I do, if it's less than perfect, it's not good enough, which is great for drive, but it can also be a little bit of a detriment when it comes to just relaxing a little bit. So that would be definitely my, my biggest flaw. Um, I think the worst thing that's happened to me in particular, although it's really truly made me grow, is I was a little bit bullied in school. And I think, uh, I think that has to do with a combination of things. Um, one, I was participating in a sport that was outside of her norm. Um, two, it's a very independent sport, so maybe I wasn't around for social events as a kid. Um, and three, I was also very dedicated to my studies and succeeding in school, and that's sometimes perceived as a little bit of not a popular thing at those ages. Um, and also, it created a little bit of self-consciousness within me. Um, but. I think uh, I've actually grown from that a lot and I'm actually a, a lot more of a confident person because of it um, because I really genuinely know who I am. So I, I would hesitate to say it's the worst thing that's happened to me, but it was definitely something that affected me for very many years in school and growing up. So I would say that would be probably your day. Uh, a combination of things. I think where I am uh, in karate is a huge thing for me. Um, it's my identity, it's who I am. I don't actually know how to introduce myself without bringing up karate in some kind of capacity. Um, karate Kate, it's just my name at this point, um, and I respond to it weirdly enough. Um, but I think the second best thing that's ever happened to me is my boyfriend. He has truly inspired me, I think, to be where I'm at, and he's really been a huge support for my ongoing performances and hopefully eventually maybe becoming an Olympian. Um, and he's the one that does all the writing for me. So you can just call him and ask him. Um, but uh, yeah, I think those would be the two best things. Pineapple in a pizza. Yes. Smart uh, smartphones for kids under 10. No. Under 12. Mm, questionable. Under 14. Uh, yes. Body protectors. Ugh. That's a no. <laughs> Spicy sauce. Yes. And justify the means. Usually. Thor run your rock. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. 100%. Guns. <laughs> Guns? No. Winter. Uh, no. Karate at the Olympics. Yes. Small dogs. Yes. Self-driving cars. No. Automated homes. Uh, no. <laughs> Karate Kid, the movie with Jackie Chan. Uh, no. Movie or series? 
Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Joke. Dad jokes. <laughs> Junk food. Uh, uh, chips. Drink. Oh, oh, coffee. Season. Summer. Quote. Follow your heart. Holiday. Christmas. Karate grind. Arawaza. Color. Blue and pink. <laughs> Favorite song. Usher. Yeah. Favorite band. Lately, Cardi B. It's not even a band. <laughs> Book. Oh, don't read. <laughs> Mythological creature. Oh, dragon. Superhero. I'm vibing super, man. Video game. Oh, uh, duck hunt. That thing. Duck hunt? <laughs> Favorite weapon, not including firearms. Ooh, interesting. Sword. Person in the world. Person in the world? Oh. Can I say my dog? Yes, you can. <laughs> I'll say Jeff, but then I'll say my dog. Okay. <laughs> One country to visit. Uh, Greece. One country to live in. Canada. Com One competitor that you'd like to go against that you haven't went against yet. Ooh, um, Sarah Cardin. Superpower. Invisibility. Illness to cure. Cancer. Which one? All of the big C. <laughs> One last meal before you die. Oh, <laughs> Putin. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you could change your name, what would it be? Oh, I don't know. One pet to adopt. Pet to adopt. I want another dog, a dog toller. <laughs> One famous person to bring back to life. Ah, Elvis. Elvis Presley. Yeah. <laughs> Any person to bring back to life. They don't have to be famous. Uh, I would bring back to life a really good friend of Jeff's. An age to have for the rest of my life. Oh man, 25. <laughs> One way to die. One way to die, quickly. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> One person to bring with you on a deserted island. Probably Jeff. Entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> One company to own. I'll say co owned but Arawaza. <laughs> One charity to finance. Um, any mental health charity. One way to make money. Doing something I love. The last thing you do before you die. Set a record. Plastic or metal? Metal. Water or fire? Water. Hot or cold? Hot. Orange juice or apple juice? Orange. Black or white? Black. Red or blue? Red. Cat or dog? Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I have both. That's such a hard question. <laughs> Fast or future? Future. Manga or comic? Comic. Ski or snowboard? Ski. Forest or beach? Beach. Blackjack or poker? Blackjack. Superman or Batman? <laughs> Boat or plane? Uh, plane. Pirate or ninja? <laughs> ninja. Vampires or werewolves? Yeah. And finally, Mac or PC? Oh, that's a dangerous question. You're gonna make people hate me, but it's all about PC. <laughs>
it's a very small uh, population that is going and the uh, qualification process is very rigid. Um, so I think, uh, I think the biggest thing to focus on when trying to reach that kind of level is just to focus on one match at a time, one event at a time. And I think if it's meant to be that I'm there, I'll be there. And maybe if I'm not, then maybe I'll try again into, uh, in 2024 in France. Um, but I think it's going to be about focusing on the process to get there rather than the end goal so that I don't lose my focus. At the time. Um, so I think my goal specifically is I want to make it to the Pan Am Games and qualify through there, um, both at the Pan Am Championships as well as the Pan Am Games. Um, so I think those are the two events that I'm going to be focusing on, although I will still be attending all the K1s and hopefully accumulating points that way. But I think focusing on this side of the world first so that I can take on the rest of it later on, maybe in a couple of years' time, is where I think my head is at.